Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. All right. All right. Everybody calm down. Everybody sit down. Everybody get settled in. Hail and welcome back to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, and good to see you all again. Good to be back. Um, my name's Jesse. You heard about all that. Um, here we are again, doing the thing, doing multiple things. Um, I'm in a different, you know, ensemble today for all of my viewers, for all of the folks that absorb this podcast on the... Um, on the respective video platforms such as YouTube and Spotify. I am not in my normal attire, but that is because I just didn't feel like changing out of my clothes today. And um, in fact, this uh, this band shirt that I'm wearing, it's, it's Ira Kanji. Can I, let me move this Mamba Jamba up. You guys see Ira Kanji. Um, so you may be wondering, you know, what, what, what relevance does this have? Well, even if it didn't have relevance, even if I was just, you know, wearing a, a random shirt, I'm just going to turn around and show you guys the back of it. You can zoom in or you can pause the video. You can look at it later. But th there's there's runes on the back of this, you know? Check it out. I'll do my best to squat down a bit. Oh, no, is that going to block it? I think that does it. Um, but anyway, the back of the shirt has runes on it. The back of the shirt is Elder Fudark runes that are intended to spell out the road to war. Now, as I've probably mentioned, maybe not on this podcast, but as I've been, you know, doing my due diligence as best I can in the past to talk about the runes and, and their um, use in... Uh, speaking in modern English. Obviously, the Elder Fudark runes were used to speak and write in Proto-Germanic. They don't translate into modern English. You can transliterate to some degree, uh, much like I've done um, in, 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 in some similar posts or, or some stuff on my social media. Um, but, but the Elder Fudark are not translatable into modern English. We don't speak modern English in, in Elder Fudark runes. We, we speak modern English using the Latin alphabet, but you can transliterate. They, they're, there's, there's, there's some ability to do that. So the, you know, T-H, the, the thorn, the thurs rune, durisas, and the E or Ewas rune is, is the best way to, 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 to spell out the word the, T-H-E. So anyway, the back of the shirt is the road to war. Um, and that is a title track um, or the tr uh, title to a track off of this band's album, Global Genocide. Um, one of my favorite songs we're going to hear in just a m sometime during this podcast um, called Iru Kanji. Iru Kanji. So Iru Kanji 
is the name of the band. And Irukanji, it's 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 like a it's a it's a jellyfish. And we're gonna listen to the track called Irukanji um, because it is in fact just a effing jellyfish, um, as the track will tell you later on. So stick around for that because during this podcast we're going to get into some thrash metal, y'all. I'm just I'm just I'm just it's that kind of an episode. Um, today's incense that we are burning is a mixture of a myrrh scented incense and a coffee flavored incense. You'll notice that I said it coffee because I am from Long Island and I will say coffee, not coffee, not give me a cup of coffee. It's give me a cup of coffee. All right. So it's myrrh and uh, coffee. We'll see how that we'll see how that goes. Do not burn the microphone, Jesse. Do not burn the microphone down. Okay. So I think that you know some of the sweet and earthy elements of of uh, of of the myrrh, which didn't fully take. Let's just get that one a little bit longer to burn. I think they'll complement each other, and so far, so good. Ah, uh, yes. Are you burning? No, you're not. You're extinguishing, you little jerk. Come on. Come on. We're going to get this, y'all. Don't worry. Um, so let me just hold it here for a minute and give it a second to... There we go. I think we got that one. That one looks to be... It's a thick boy. Oh, yeah, there we go. We got it now. All right, so coffee and myrrh. Working, well, working out well so far. Um, so yeah, um, we're going to come back to the Irukandji thing here in a moment, actually. We'll probably do that towards the end of the episode, um, because I want to get what we're here for, you know, out of the way. Oh yeah, that's nice. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now we're going into the Nova Scotia. Now we're going into the, to the, uh, Midwestern parts of the u.s don't you know oh yeah no it's not oh yeah it's oh yeah so but yeah um what's what, what are we doing today guys what are we doing today um in the middle towards the end of the week following the summer solstice we have surpassed the longest day and the shortest night of the year here in the northern hemisphere meaning that the days to come whew, that's a smoky boy, uh, meaning that the days to come are going to get progressively shorter. So the darkness is starting to creep in. Is that metaphorical? No, it's quite literally the darkness is going to start creeping in um, and we will get longer nights and shorter days um, going forward. But that's just the cyclical nature of, of things. You know, that, that, that's, that's, how, that's how it be. Okay, so... Let's talk a bit about, uh, let's recap, I guess we should say. I want to I recap a bit about the, the most recent summer, summer solstice celebration. Say that three times. Since. Summer solstice celebration, summer solstice celebration, summer solstice celebration. We did it. All right. So the most recent solstice celebration that I got to be a part of was the Raven Moon Hearths um, public event called Suna Bloat. Been talking about it up to, well, this past this past week, um, and this past weekend, myself and uh, my law speaker uh, of our tribe, and uh, we, we, we both attended, and we got to meet and be reacquainted, uh, meet new people and be reacquainted with old friends. Um, so I do want to just give a quick shout out and, and, and thanks, you know, to our friends of Raven Moon Hearth, um, Greg, the Chieftain, Don, the Thule, Jared, the Gothi, and his wife Michelle, who uh, participated and was was an active role in in the evening's ritual. Um, of course, Don and his wife are hosting the event, um, and everybody else, all the vendors who came, all of the new folks that I got to you know be acquainted with and, and get to know and do rune readings for. Uh, so, for anybody who did uh, come out to Raven Moon Hearth's event, the, the Suna Blood event this past weekend. Um, and got to, wow, 
the smoke is just coming right here um that got a chance to um get their runes read uh by me thank you thank you for that opportunity and thank you for allowing me a chance to kind of tap into that you know aspect of things and that was a really interesting uh I don't know, series of events, it, you know, all of the runes that I read for, for people, there were, there was a lot of repeat themes um, throughout the day. Um, so many of the people that came up to me that I was reading the runes for, you know, came to me and I was asking, you know, why are you here? Not why are you here at Sunablo, but why are you here talking to me? Why did you come to me to have you have the runes read? And so much of the answers that I got were, um, I don't know. I don't know why I'm here. I just, I'm, I'm looking for just general answers, you know, guidance. Um, am I doing the right thing? Am I on the right path? And I, I've never had the runes read. You know, there, there was, there was multiple um, cases of the folks that I've read runes for who have never had runes read and they may have had other um, forms of divination performed and, and, but the runes were never a thing. And so it was like, oh, this is new and let's, let's see you know, how it goes. Um, and uh, it was, it was a, it was a, it was a emotionally and spiritually challenging day. I, I, I've read runes for people. I, I, I've read my own runes. I've read, you know what I mean? Like it's, 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 it's what part of what I do is part of my spirituality as a pagan, as a Norse pagan. But having so many people have, the interest of reading the runes uh, or having the runes read for them, having me read their runes. There was a lot of exchange of energy and it was neat because there was, there were, there was, there was one individual, I think her name was Lori. We read the runes and there was a ladybug that appeared. And then another fella um, who I read the runes for later on, there was an inchworm, an inchworm that appeared that walked around the rune casting area. The, the presence of the Lanvitir expressing their presence or, or manifesting their presence in the forms of these creatures. Um, you know, I would, I would use such a term as, you know, there's a spirit, there's this spirit, whether it was the spirit of the ladybug, the spirit of the inchworm, whatever, right? How they appear and, uh, and manifest themselves when at, at, at that specific time was significant. And we took all of that into the rune readings. And that's what I love about the work that I do and the way that I serve the community and the way that I serve the people is that it's not just a matter of let's, let's spread out some runes and let's see what happens. No, it's, it's literally we're, we're throwing the bones, we're, 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 we're casting them, you know? And then little things like that, like a ladybug to appear or, or an inchworm or whatever, like those are things that you could not have um, inserted or added to an online reading or, or long distance sort of exchange of, of a discussion in that way, right? It has to be in person to have that aspect of things um, added to it. And, it. and it made it such a, uh, I think, I'm trying to think of the right word, like it made it such a complete process. You know what I'm saying? Like it made it such a, a thing that I couldn't, possibly recreate at any other point in time and that's what i love so much about it so thank you thank you to everyone who came out to soon and, and supported first and foremost the hearth the raven moon hearth kindred like they put so much work into the event the fact that it's on a big enough piece of land that uh you know the, the homeowners that you know hosted the event don and his wife um all of the work that goes into preparing the land preparing the ritual space preparing the um, the food, you know, all of the collective effort, you guys did a bang up job. So Greg, Don, you know, um, Jared, Kyle, you know, Michelle, um, everybody, just everybody a part of the hearth that, that made this event so welcoming and so wholesome. It's so refreshing. And it's been such a long time since I've been able to experience that. And I hope that the other people that were there, um, that, that got a chance to experience this, feel the same way that they they got a chance to be exposed to the, the the true meaning of heathenry you know like yes it's a public event and yes there are people there who weren't necessarily norse pagans but you got to, you got a dose of it man you got a chance to see 
you know, the way that a tribe runs their event. And it, and it was very specific to the hearth and they, you know, did it their way. But they did it in such a good way. They did. They, they really did. You know, the games, um, the, 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 the way that you inserted, you know, modern things into the whole thing, the, 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 the study talks, you know, the discussion, the things that, that your Gothi, let, uh, let Jared uh, led, just really well done, top notch. So you guys, Raven Moon Hearth is in, based out of, you know, the Nashville, Tennessee area, Middle Tennessee. They hold these public events. Soon and bloat in the summer. They have one coming up in October called Shadow Moot. It kind of falls, whether by purpose or by happenstance, around the time of the Winter Nights uh, Festival or, or Winter Nights Celebration that is historically documented and attested to in, in, in the sagas and, and some of the other uh, primary or lesser sources. It happens around that time. So mid-October, if you guys are on Facebook, check out uh, Raven Moonhearth, Friends of Raven Moonhearth, and Shadow Moot. If you just search Facebook for Shadow Moot, all one word, you'll find an event for that. Come out, consider coming out. No, you know, no matter where you are, consider coming out and being a part of this because they they do. They put a lot of thought and a lot of care into their events. Um, I have every intention to be there with my tribe in October um, to you know kind of uh, celebrate the. I think the way that they um, or where their focus is uh, for Shadow Moot is a focus on on Hell or Hella, you know. So the daughter of Loki. Um, it is. It, it's it's around that time of year where we look at the the approaching winter months. It's 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 again within a week or so historically of of when uh, based off of the lunar solar cycles when uh, winter nights was was historically or traditionally observed. So that whole like thinning of the veil thing, Samhain is right around the corner of that time of year. So again, not just, it doesn't just appeal to like the Norse or Germanic pagans. It appeals to a lot of polytheists and, and, and whether it be Celtic or, or whatever pagans that are in our area that come, it can, it, it, they're able to connect with it and it resonates with them. So I do encourage people, regardless of where you are in the country, October is but four, four months away, give or take. June, July. Well, we're almost there. So June to July, August, September. Yeah, four months away. Plan for it. Make make your plans to come out to 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 Shadow Moot and see what it is that I'm talking about. Um, so very good job, Greg, the Chieftain, everybody. Raven Moonhearth, bravo. Um, glad to have been there and glad to have been a part of it. Um, it was wholesome and it was good. Um, so for those that are in the area that are listening to this podcast today, when it airs, don't forget this weekend, Sunday the 26th in Murfreesboro, Tennessee at the McAllister's Deli on Medical Center Parkway, we're going to have a MTH or Middle Tennessee Heathens meetup, pub moot, whatever you want to call it. It's not really a pub, it's a restaurant, um, but it's a meetup and it's, it's, it's open to all, right? So whether you are Norse Heathen, Celtic Pagan, uh roman polytheist reconstructionist uh atheist even just whatever whoever you are if you're in the area and you want to come out and see what folks like myself and others in the area are about let's get a chance to meet let's let's, let's network let's talk let's you know see what the community has to offer um so that's coming up again sunday the 26th there is a facebook event um if you're not in the facebook world and you don't you know, really touch on that, but you listen to these podcasts. Um, I will include details about that as far as addresses, location, and all that in the comments in the description area, I should say, or in the show notes of this podcast. So if you're listening and you don't want to go to Facebook and find it, check your show notes area. The the details will be there. Um, even if you're not on Facebook, you can still come to the event. Um, hoping for a nice turnout, hopefully. All right. So um, what is today's topic of discussion now that we got all of that fun stuff out of there? What is today's topic of discussion? Well, what we are going to be talking about today is an email that I received from Mitch. Um, let me just pull the email up real quick because Mitch um, writes in and says, hello, first of all, let me say 
I freaking love your content. Well, Mitch, I appreciate you for saying that. So thank you so much for writing in and, and starting off your email with that. It's good to know that you enjoy what I do. You've helped inspire me greatly on my path. My hat's off to you, even though I'm not wearing one, but, but again, thank you. I was hoping to get your opinion on something. So I understand that oaths and promises in heathenry are different, but since oaths are a heathen thing, if the other party is, for example, a Christian or even an atheist, would promises or giving that person your word be considered the same severity as an oath, since they aren't heathen, or is that irrelevant? Have a great day, Mitch. So today's topic of the podcast is going to be on that of oaths, oaths slash promises. And he is right. Um, Mitch, you're right in the sense that the thing of, between oaths and promises are different within a heathen worldview. Um, so let's talk a bit about that. I have gone over this in, in a previous video on my channel, um, which I will link into the show notes and description of, of, of this episode. Um, so if you haven't seen that it is a bit dated. Uh, it's, it's been at least a year or two since I've done that video, but I think the message behind it and all that still um, echoes true to this day. In that, we talk about oaths, and we talk about promises, we talk about swearing something of solidity, you know, between ourselves and individuals. Um, there has to be an understanding, we, you know, before we really like go off into this and, and this is again this is this is probably touching on things that are a bit of a um i would i wouldn't necessarily call it heathenry 101 right like this is this is stuff like when we talk about oaths and promises and all that kind of stuff we're talking about things that are a bit advanced in the worldview of heathenry or in a worldview of heathenry so if you're not familiar with what we're talking about um there's going to be some homework for you to do there's going to be some research for you to do and hopefully the videos that i post in the comments description show notes etc will be helpful for you to understand but when we talk about promises or oaths promises and oaths oaths are different than promises okay a promise does not carry the same weight and does not insinuate the same things as an oath so the biggest thing i think that we could probably summarize with those two things is that a promise is a promise. I promise to do this. I promise to do that. And there, and, and there is no binding um, or, or promise. Uh, there's, no, there's nothing binding about a promise, right? I promise to do this. Well, what if you don't do it? What happens if you don't? You, know, you, you broke your promise. And, and that could maybe damage your reputation. That could maybe hurt who you are as a person and how you are known as a person if you fail to uphold your promise. But, but with an oath, there is more to it. An oath includes more than just yourself. And there is also consequences for not fulfilling that oath. So let's use, for example, a very common thing that we see happening across, um, I think, a lot of heathen circles, you know, right around the time of New Year's. You know, when we all make our resolutions or when people make resolutions, it's a promise in a way, right? I resolve to do X, Y, Z. And we'll just use for the sake of argument, losing weight, getting in better, you know, getting in better shape, something along those lines, because that seems to be a very common thing. You know, I promise to lose X amount of weight. You know, that's not really binding. You know, that, that's like, that's a goal that you're setting. You, you're saying, I, I, I resolve to do this. I promise to do that. But what are the consequences if you don't? Well, the, there's really none, because if you don't lose that weight, then you've just failed to achieve the goal. You know, the resolution that you have set was not met. And so, you know, it, it could be argued that, you know, the persons or person, right, however you've expressed this promise to, to people around you might think differently of you if you fail to keep that promise. Um, now, the oath, when, thing, when, when an oath is given and when an oath is taken, that's, that's some of the very 
key things to, to, to bear in mind here. Oaths are given and oaths are taken. When an oath happens, there is an oath giver and an oath taker, at least in the, the, the historical side of things. Like when, and again, I'm, I'm taking this as, as a very pointed thing to, to Mitch's question, is it being oaths are, are a heathen thing? Yes, they are. That's not an untrue statement. I think it extends beyond heathenry, and I think the meaning behind the oath can, can transcend into other cultures and into other uh, polytheistic, maybe, or even non-religious worldviews. Um, but in this context, oaths are given and oaths are taken. So there is an oath giver, somebody who gives the oath. There is a witness. There is an audience. There, there are people who are witness to this oath, and then the person who is taking on that oath. They're different than a promise in that. When we have a situation where, and I'm just going to use an example um, that, is, that is close to me because it's, it's so fresh in my mind. At certain events, at certain holy tides, it was documented, especially over Yule, that oaths were given and taken over the, um, the boar for, the, for, for the Yule. There were, there were oaths sworn on the boar. So the way that I see it and the way that I've come to learn is that the way that an oath works is you have to have someone who gives the oath, usually the, the person who is, whether it be the, the, the Lord, Chieftain, Gothi, whatever of, of your group or kindred is the oath giver. You have the person who is taking that oath, the recipient, the one who says, I swear to do this, that, and the other. And then you have the people who are a part of it that are tying themselves in this whole exchange. There, there, is, there is an exchange happening here that is, that is connecting all of the group. So fundamentally, as an example, I'm going to kind of just share with you guys um, something that happened this past year or at Yule, um, which was in January for us. Um, I took an oath. I took an oath and I was given an oath by my law speaker. Um, I guess it was kind of like, it wasn't like an officially, like he didn't give it to me and I took it. It was, it was kind of a thing where it was the way that the way that it was all constructed um, at the time it was, you know, I am oathing in front of my tribe and I am being held responsible in front of my tribe. There's going to be repercussions if I fail to fulfill my oath um, and my oath was what it was. I'm not going to go into detail about it right now. There will come a time where I talk about this, but now is not that time. Um, and, and basically the way that it panned out was the oath was to fulfill a task. The oath was to fulfill something that I felt was attainable and achievable with challenges, with dedication, with things that I knew would not just be easy to do. It's like, you know, anybody can lose weight. Anybody can Go on a diet, anybody can exercise, anybody can watch what they eat, you know, and, and lose weight. That's not an oath. It's, you know, if you promise or if you say, I want to lose, you know, 30 pounds in a year or whatever, like that's an attainable goal. And you can, you can do that without having to enter into the oath process. My oath involved financial obligations, um, doing things that I normally wouldn't do financially to achieve this oath, um, and, and, and dedicated work, you know, maybe not my own physical labor, um, but enough of focus on, on the whole thing to, um, you know, make sure, move the camera there a little bit, sorry about that, that uh, I, I, I fulfilled that oath. So I said, or I gave, you know, I, I took that all. I said, I'm going to do this. And there were other people around me that are holding me responsible for that. And by doing so, they are now tied and they are now interwoven into the, the, the whole oath web, as it were. If I fail to fulfill my oath, not only is my luck and is my, uh, my reputation damaged, but their luck is now impacted because they have entered into that agreement with me. They are now holding me accountable and responsible for that. Their luck is as much on the line as mine is. Um, 
maybe not as much, but to a degree, their luck is on the line, right? If I don't fulfill my oath, then they're going to be like, well, what the F, dude? You said you were going to do it. You, you, you were going to do this. And now if I don't fulfill this oath, what happens? They hold me accountable. I have to pay recompense. I have to pay shield. So this, again, this is all very heathen-centric. This is all focused on the heathen worldview, the arch-heathen worldview of how things were done in an ancient society amongst the either warrior class, um, specifically warrior class, because that's what we have that's documented. Oaths were given and taken amongst warlords, chieftains, and their, and their, and their um, you know, the Jarls and their chieftains or the Jarls and their warlords, right? Like this is a very common thing. Kings even... Um, there, there, there's, there's enough documented sources that, that support this. So now I'm going to insert the caveat that Mitch mentioned, whereas there was heathens, or it's a heathen thing, right? It's a heathen focused thing, but it's what if you have non heathens present? Or what if there's non heathens? Does it, does it become uh, irrelevant? Does it become not a thing anymore? I took my oath. My oath was given to me, and I took my oath amongst heathens and non-heathens alike, right? Um, one of my brothers, one of, my, one of the people who I am not blood kin to, but who is nonetheless a brother to me, is not pagan, is not heathen. However, they were present for the giving and taking of said oath. And they understood the construct of it all. As long as the people or person present understand what is happening and agree to it then it really doesn't matter that they're heathen or not if they accept the conditions of the oath if they accept that they are ritually tying themselves to that person by simply being present right i've, I've actually had events take place where when an oath is given or taken right some people who do not want to be bound to that through the through through obligation leave the room. They 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 remove themselves from the area because they're like, I don't want nothing to do with this. If if something were to go sideways and they can't fulfill that oath, I don't want my luck tied to this person's oath to you know to and 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 have my luck damaged or or compromised as a result. So I feel that there is a responsibility whenever there is oaths being given and taken to express that, that, you know, Hey, this is what it's about. This isn't just me promising something to you guys. or this isn't just promising something myself and your witness by entering into this agreement by, by, by being present, you are effectively tying yourself to the outcome of this. If I fail, you hold me accountable. If I win and if I succeed, and if my oath is fulfilled, then I can come back and I can give a bait. I can give a boast. And your luck and mine is, you know, added to. And you have, you have then, uh, as, 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 a, as a participant of this agreement, of this, of this oath, you have, you know, entered into this uh, thing. And, and, and by my accomplishing said oath, your luck is now expounded upon. You have now increased your own luck because you've agreed to tie yourself to me in that way. So to the, to, the, to the point of it being, you know, whether they're Christian, whether they're atheist, does it matter? Yes, it matters. It matters to the degree that they understand what is going on and why we're doing what we're doing. Is everybody in agreement and do they all understand? And if they don't, and if they have questions, are they taking the proper measures to ask and get understanding? Or if they understand fully and don't want to be a part of it, are they removing themselves? And, and I've always done that. Like, I've always made it clear, like, hey, guys, when we're about to enter into this thing, when we're about to do with this, if anybody doesn't want to be a part of this, here's, here's what you're doing by just simply being here. And if you don't want to be a part of this, then you need to consider that and perhaps remove yourself from the situation, right? Um, because, and, and, and here's why. And it does, it goes back to the worldview of, of, of arch heathens, of, of when things like this were done and then documented sources of how it was done. 
So I don't think it inherently is a bad thing or, or damaging thing to include non-heathens in your oaths. But they need to understand that it the way that we do this, what we're doing this for, the purpose behind it does include you to a degree. And you are now responsible for and accountable, you know, for that outcome. Um, and it's worked well enough for me in, in, in the way that I've done things, you know, actually this year at Yule, the, this was the first time that I can say for sure that any oath was uh, given and or taken, you know, um, and it's all about reality and it's all about, you know, setting a um, uh, attainable goal if you're gonna if you if you think that the only way that you're gonna be able to accomplish something is to oath to do it then there needs to be some checks and balances in place right you shouldn't just be going here be like man i need to lose 50 pounds in two months there should be somebody like a thule or a law speaker somebody that that is that is designated at that moment to be like hold on a minute boo, like 50 pounds in two months that's 25 pounds a month that's you know that's a that's outrageous you know even if you were like working hard and, and, and working out and, and eating good, I mean, like you're literally like starving yourself just to accomplish that potentially, right? Or whatever. I'm just, you know, using that as, an, as, a, as a hypothetical, as a situation to, it's kind of like when you look at the, the Beowulf saga, you know, when, when, when Beowulf says he's going to slay Grendel and he's going to do all these things, you know, he had his stool. He, you know, he had that guy, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Was it? I don't remember his name. It's an old English name and it's, it's on the tip of my tongue, but I don't want to misspeak and, and mispronounce it. But he, uh, he's like, he challenges him. Like he, he like calls out the fact that, you know, talking about this, you know, are you up to the task and, and brings up some reality points, you know what I'm saying? So there's that, like, there's that whole, like, hey, if somebody just comes in and, and, and wants to be like, I'm going to do X, Y, Z, I'm going to be this great big thing, I'm going to, you know, whatever it is, there should be somebody in place to pump the brakes. Let's, let's think about this. Have you thought about this? Are you sure you're up to the task? And they're the ones that typically will also set the shield or set the recompense right well all right you say you're big and bad you think you're going to kill grendel and all this kind of thing you think you're going to do all this stuff that you say you're going to do well should you fail and there's a likelihood that you will or whatever you know there, there might be some of that fleeting flighting whatever some of that um gentle uh gentle maybe sometimes aggressive um, ribbing of, of sorts, roasting of sorts to be like, you know, you see, you're going to do this, but you, you can't even do X, Y, Z, you know, that sort of stuff. Here's what you're going to pay if you fail. Here's what you're going to do if you fail. So when, uh, when it comes to oaths, are they a heathen thing? They are a heathen thing. Yes. I mean, they, uh, they are definitely part of it. And when it comes to a lot of what's done amongst heathen tribes and heathen circles, there, there's an oathing process, right? Especially when, when, when you have groups that are looking to acquire more members, um, there's, there's a, there comes a point in time where, hey, after we've proven your worth, after we've seen that you are worthy of, of being entered in and amongst our ranks, as it were, um, now it is time for you to swear fealty to your chieftain or swear loyalty and troth and oath yourself into that family, into that tribe. Um, doesn't have to be that you're 100% Norse pagan or Germanic pagan or whatever, but as such, and as, as you are wanting to be a part of something, you are, you are agreeing to the rules and regulations that come with being in that group and in that tribe. So, are the challenges that 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 come across with the uh, I don't know being non heathen atheist whatever um, as long as they understand what is at stake and what is being done for the reasons that it's being done I I don't I don't see anything particularly or inherently damaging to explore the oath process in the way that I've described it very loosely um, 
to include people of, of non-heathen uh, persuasions. All right. Um, and it might, at times, you know, and again, I think every situation is different. It might add an element of, of uh, or a layer of complexity to the point that it, it, it enhances the actual tribe's growth and construct. So, but Mitch, I hope that that helped answer the question. Um, and thank you for writing in. Uh, as a reminder for everybody that is wanting to, you know, um, ask, ask questions, you can write in Midgard Musings TN at gmail.com. You can call in 615 671 9832 and have your voice actually heard on this podcast because I will play your voicemail. I will. Don't, don't, don't tempt me. I will. Um, if you don't want your voice heard when you do call in, just give me that disclaimer up front. Otherwise, I'm going to be like, well, they called in. We got to put their voice out here. And uh, you can use, you know, anonymity. You can, you know, nothing, none of your personal information ever gets revealed, of course. Um, names uh, and all that are, are protected or, or, or redacted to protect the, the innocent, this, that, and the other. Feel free. Feel free to contact the podcast. Midgard Musings TN at gmail.com, 615-671-9832. Um, but at this point in time, what I want to do or what I am wanting to do is uh, share with you the Irakanji song called Irakanji, right? So this is their um, this is their band camp, obviously, as you can tell. So it's literally, as you would see on my shirt, Irakanji. Um, their font and all that obviously is a dead giveaway if, you, if you're a metal fan that they are thrash thrash death and you're about to hear what i have to say because this is off of their global genocide album which was released some time ago don't remember exactly the year but i feel like it was somewhere around 2012 2013 something like that local middle tennessee uh thrash death band irukanji this is the track called irukanji Oh yeah, here we go. Get it. talk about some crazy mosh pits and these little dive bars and clubs around here. This is where it's at, son.
you guys are in for a treat here in just a minute. There's a break now. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Pause. So that you guys get a chance to prepare. So whenever, they, whenever they slow stuff down, like they're doing right now, you know something's about to happen. Okay, let me let me just let me just stop for a moment and give you guys a chance to recuperate from you know the last two and a half minutes or so of of that because this is not typical of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, but I gotta plug the dudes when the dudes need to get plugged. You know what I'm saying? I gotta I gotta show some love to the homies, Hardy Hardison, Kyle Caldwell, Matt, what's his name? Uh, Cromo, Campbell, something. I can't remember. Anyway, these guys were, they don't, they don't play shows around here anymore, man. But I'm telling you, when it came to the local thrash metal scene around here, I have thrown down heavy in the pit with these dudes. All right. So enough of the enough of the hype, right? You, 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 you've you, you've got the the gist. Let's continue. And if you want to know what era kanji is, what era kanji is, they're about to tell you what it is. Tell you what it is. What is Irukanji? What is it, ladies and gentlemen? I want to know. What is Irukanji? It's just a fucking jellyfish. Ooh. It's just a fucking jellyfish. It's just a fucking jellyfish. No, it's done to die. It's made of it to die. I mean, just wow, right? I'm going to post their band camp because, again, got to show love for the homies, man. Check them out on band camp. Get their stuff. It's out there, clearly. Um, and it's a good-ass time, bro. Like, it's a good-ass time. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm getting a little bit loose. I'm getting a bit loose because of it all. It makes me want to just throw some elbows in the pit. You know what I'm saying? It makes me want to, makes me want to shoulder check. A dude, man, makes me want to, I don't know, man, like makes me want to do the polka. You ever seen polka done in the metal thrash pit? Well, you're missing out. Makes me want to have a pillow fight. <laughs> it does, man. Um, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed that. And since you stuck around to the very end, if this video does get demonetized because I shared content that may have some copyright protection on it consider supporting this podcast through super chat donations right now if you're watching this on youtube and you're in your you know part of the live premiere consider donating through super chat donations and also later on as you watch this or, or whatever there there's on youtube there's this thanks option if you go down there and you know oh, i want to share this or i want to like it or whatever there's a thing that says thanks it looks like a little looks like a heart with a mon money shine a little dollar sign on the, on the heart there Put it in 
for whatever you think is 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 worth it. Uh, give back in in some sort of way. I mean, it don't it doesn't it doesn't hurt. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know if this video get demonetized because of me sharing all that awesomeness. Also because of the fact that you know about six or seven f bombs got dropped. But consider it. That's all I'm asking. Just consider it. If you don't do it, it's fine. You just it's out there. I just, I got to put it out there. So there we go. Irakanji wearing the Irakanji shirt, the road to war, global genocide available on Bandcamp. It's out there. You need to check it out. If you like that sort of thing and tell all of your friends that like that sort of thing to check it out too. Information is down in the description, in the show notes, et cetera, et cetera. That concludes today's podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mitch, for writing in and asking about that about the oath thing, you know, um, I hope that, you know, what I was able to offer and share, um, gives you guys some things to think about. Um, and I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. If you did consider supporting this effort by going to the show notes and description area, click on the link tree link, become a patron on Patreon, become a channel member, donate support. Give me a, um, coffee, Ko-Fi, whatever the thing is. It's all in the link tree link. No, no down there, over there, up here, wherever it is. Uh, check it out. You can buy merchandise. Follow me on all the socials, all right? Facebook, Twitter. I say Instagram, but there's it's something weird. I don't post to Instagram unless I post to Facebook, and I try to cross-post from one platform to the other. But even though I have everything connected, nothing is sharing over to Instagram. So for all of my Instagrammers, for everybody that's on the G, okay, everybody that's, that's on the gram, I, I've been sharing stuff. And it's somehow not posting. My last post on Instagram is like weeks ago. Um, I don't know what to do. Everything, all the, all the, all the eyes are dotted and all the T's are crossed with what I'm supposed to be doing to get it. And, and it just randomly stopped working out of the blue. All right. So it's nothing against you, but I don't have all the time in the world to try to figure it out. So anyway, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Google Plus, your sister's ass, whatever. Um, <laughs> wherever I'm at, give me a follow. Thank you for tuning in to today's Random Heathen Ramblings podcast episode. Stay tuned. We got some really cool episodes lined up. I know um, next week we are going down under, mate. Going to have uh, a shaman from Australia on this show. We're going to be having a guest on the show talking about what he does in the southern hemisphere of things which is going to be really cool i don't think i've ever had a guest um on this podcast before from anybody that far away so tune in next week for that um and then in the weeks thereafter we're going to be talking to um a fellow who maybe you are familiar with if you guys have ever heard of burning man myth maker i think is the channel or whatever heron oshii is going to be coming on here. I just, I just gave you a hint. Heron Oshi is going to be coming on to this podcast here in a few weeks. Um, at least that's what my understanding is. That's what we've tentatively set. We're going to nail down some of those specifics soon too. So somewhere around mid-July, more to come on that as I have more information that I'm able to share. Uh, so we got some fun stuff lined up for you in uh, the coming weeks and, and, and so forth. Um, don't forget this Sunday, June 26th, Middle Tennessee Heathens is going to be uh, hosting an event here in Murfreesboro, Tennessee at the McAllister's Deli and Medical Center. Come on out wherever you are, North Alabama, Southern Indiana, Illinois, Kentucky, Georgia, wherever. Just come on out. Say hi. I'd love to meet you. So thank you all for tuning in to this week's episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. My name is Jesse. I am your host here each and every week. Hail to you all. May the gods continue to notice you, look over you, walk with you even. And may your ancestors smile upon you. Thank you all. <laughs>